If you're following a keto lifestyle or you're simply low carb, regular bagels are pretty much out. So what do you do if you're craving a thick, dense, chewy bagel? And what kind of flour makes the best low carb bagel recipe? Hi everyone, it's Maya from wholesomeyum.com and I make easy, healthy recipes with 10 ingredients or less. So today I'm showing you how to make keto bagels with almond flour or with coconut flour. These are the two most common flours used in keto baking, but they are vastly different. So we'll talk about how these differences apply to making low carb bagels. And no matter what flour you choose, these are super easy to make, but I'll go through all my tips and tricks to ensure you get consistent results every time. These bagels are chewy and dense, nice and tall, not flat, just like a real bagel should be all with just five ingredients, and you don't even have to boil them. Let's do this. We'll make the almond flour version step by step here. The process is actually the same whether you use almond flour or coconut flour, the only difference is the amounts of the ingredients, so I'll highlight those differences as we go. We're going to start by adding one and a half cups of blanched almond flour to a food processor. The almond flour you use here makes a big difference because different brands vary in their coarseness. You can see this one is really fine and pretty powdery. Some other ones are more coarse and that's going to mean grainy bagels. Nobody wants that. You don't wanna use almond meal here either which has the skins from the almonds and is going to be even more coarse. This was one of the reasons I created Wholesome Yum Blanched Almond Flour because I needed something where I know I'm never going to get that gritty texture in baked goods. If you want to make the keto bagels with coconut flour instead, you're going to need much less, just half a cup of coconut flour. This is because coconut flour is much more absorbent than almond flour, so your bagels will be too dry if you use the same amount. Unlike almond flour, the consistency of the grind is not an issue with different coconut flour brands, but the absorbency can vary. So I use Wholesome Yum coconut flour for testing this recipe, and the amount you need might vary if you use a different brand. Moving on, we're going to add one tablespoon of baking powder. It might seem like a lot, but low carb recipes tend to need more baking powder than regular ones. And we'll just process this until it's smooth. It helps to pulse a little bit because if you process it on an ongoing basis, this could actually turn into almond butter. Next, I'm going to add two large eggs. You don't need to whisk them first, just add them directly to the food processor. And if you're making the coconut flour version, you'll need three eggs instead. Coconut flour recipes, again, because of the absorbency, they tend to need more eggs to get the right consistency. So I'm going to pulse this again until it's nice and uniform and just make sure there's no dry flour left on the sides. And we'll set this aside for now. So the next step might seem a little strange. We're going to melt cheese and then we're going to add that to the dough. If you haven't heard of this before, it's called the Fathead Dough and I actually have a whole guide on it in my Easy Keto Cookbook that's here the keto bagel recipe is in there as well. So I'm adding two and a half cups here of shredded mozzarella cheese. I don't recommend other cheeses here because the flavor will be stronger, but the texture will be pretty close if you don't mind cheesy bagels. And two ounces of cream cheese. The cheeses are going to give these keto bagels a nice chewy texture without any gluten or white flour. Melt the cheeses in the microwave. It usually takes about 90 seconds, stirring halfway through, or you can do this in a double boiler on the stove if you prefer. Stir well at the end to make sure that it's completely smooth. And you'll want to have your food processor ready right away for the next step. Now working quickly while the cheese is still hot, we are going to add this to the dough in the food processor. Now what I'm gonna do is make sure that the blade is positioned so that the cheese is kind of sticking into the blade. Be careful not to cut yourself, but this is going to help it mix together. We want to ensure that there are no streaks in here, no streaks of cheese, no streaks of almond flour, it should all be uniform. So you can see here a little bit, there's a chunk of almond flour there and some cheese separate. So we wanna keep going. And scrape the sides of the food processor as needed to make sure everything is mixed evenly. Sometimes it might get stuck, so if that happens and it's not spinning, sometimes this pops off and you just have to stick it back in there. So this looks pretty uniform here. If you find that you can't get it uniform and you're seeing solidified chunks of cheese in there, you can transfer the dough back to the bowl, microwave it for about 30 seconds or so, that will soften it, and then you can add it back to the food processor to mix it up really well. The other thing we're looking for is the stickiness of the dough. So you can kind of touch it and see how sticky it is. It's normal for it to be a little sticky, but if it's so sticky that like 
it would just completely stick to your hands. Right now it looks a little sticky. Sometimes it might be warm too because of the cheese. If it's really sticky, you'll wanna refrigerate this for about 30 minutes or so. That will make it a little easier to work with as you're forming the bagels. Now I'm going to divide my dough to make my bagels. If the dough is still sticky after refrigerating, mine is not, but if yours is, it can help to oil your hands or your spatula or even put some water on your hands, anything to reduce that sticking. Mine is pretty good here, but it does tend to get stuck in the food processor. This is the sticking I'm talking about. So just form this into a ball and then flatten it a little bit to make a disc shape. Now I'm gonna cut this into sections, but first I'm gonna spray my knife with a little bit of cooking spray to help with that sticking. So I'm going to cut this like a pie into six sections. I'll go ahead and oil my hands as well. Now we're just gonna roll this into logs for our bagels. Keep in mind that these will rise and spread, so we do want to make them smaller than we think we need and with a bigger hole than we think we need in the center. Helps to make it kind of tall. That's gonna help ensure that the bagels are tall when they're done. Place that onto a lined baking sheet. At this point, you can bake these as is, but I like to add a few toppings just for a little variety. So I'm going to spray these with cooking spray first. This is going to help the toppings stick. If you like, you can also use an egg wash, but I think the oil is just the easiest. And I'm going to do a mix here. I'll do two sesame seed, and there's pretty much no way not to have the seeds all over outside the bagel, but that's okay. And I'll do two with everything bagel seasoning. This stuff is delicious. And just pat the tops of these lightly so that the seasonings stick, that way they're less likely to fall off. Bake the keto bagels for about 15 minutes at 375 degrees Fahrenheit until they are golden brown. It may be tempting to enjoy one of these right away, but let them cool for at least 15 minutes to firm up, or for the best texture, let them cool completely. So I'm not going to bore you with the coconut flour version because the process is literally exactly the same, but I did promise you a comparison. So I have both types made here, and you can see they do look a little bit different. The almond flour ones are taller and fluffier. The texture on the top is also a little bit smoother. And the coconut flour ones are a little bit flatter because they do spread a little bit more, and the texture does have a bit more lumps on the top but inside these are actually gonna be very similar. I'll cut these open and show you. So you can see that on the inside, these look fairly similar. The almond flour version is a little bit more dense, whereas the coconut flour version has more air bubbles in it. And the coconut flour version, since it's bigger and it's spread more, is a little bit more like a bagel thin, whereas this one is taller. But the real question is, which one tastes better? Let's find out. Almond flour version and coconut flour version. Those are both really good. I probably slightly prefer the almond flour version, but only a little. And the coconut flour version is a great option if you can't have nuts. I've heard mixed results from people about which one is better, so help me settle this debate and let me know which one you like better. And if you're looking for a low carb alternative to fluffy, soft white bread, this keto bread recipe is my favorite. 